All right, greetings once again, space fans. We are back, and we are just about one hour away from the, I'm going to say opening of the launch window, but it's an instantaneous launch window today for CRS-19 down at Cape Canaveral. We've got the SpaceX Falcon 9 standing by, and we've got our live feed going. So what we're going to do is cut over to the NASA Kennedy press site right now, where we've got Chris Gebhardt standing by to tell us a little bit about what's going on with the mission. Again, thanks for joining us. This is CRS-16 coming up in about just one hour before the launch. All right, and good morning from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where you are looking at a live shot of the Falcon 9 rocket on pad 40 as it is preparing to launch on the CRS-19 mission to the International Space Station. I am Chris Gebhardt. I am the Assistant Managing Editor of NASA Spaceflight, and I will be your host along with Das Veldaz for the next uh, hour or so as we head toward a liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, liftoff is right now targeted for 12.51 and 58 seconds Eastern Standard Time, which is 17.51 and 58 seconds Universal Time. For those of you who know your local time better in conversion from UTC. Uh, so right now, um, the SpaceX teams are getting ready to uh, enter the fueling process for the Falcon 9. Um, that fueling process is set to pick up about 35 minutes ahead of liftoff. They have uh, completed a technical readiness pull and from a technical standpoint they are ready to proceed into the fueling operations. They have also um, at this point um, completed the checkouts of the automated flight termination system on board the rocket and tested that system's connection to the various range uh, safety stations here at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and Kennedy Space Center and all of those checkouts are done and good so the AFTS is ready to support today's launch. Um, so go ahead and send us your questions in chat um, and uh, especially if you were watching earlier and we didn't get to all of your questions I apologize we had very limited time at the launch pad this morning but we will uh, go ahead and put your questions back into chat for this new stream and we will answer them as we go through the day. Um, the, um, the main thing that we continue to watch right now are the upper level winds. Um, Right now, they are slightly lower than what was predicted. So they were predicted to be at 120 knots, and they are at 116 knots predicted for uh, 1300 local time today, about nine minutes after liftoff, so right around liftoff time. And lower is better. Um, they said yesterday that as long as the winds did not exceed the maximum value that they should be good to go. The uh, trajectory analyst at SpaceX had determined that 120 knot winds were okay primarily because there's no shear. The winds at all the different levels of the atmosphere are moving the same direction. So that is extremely important. Um, uh, and. So we'll just wait. We, we've got weather balloons up and that final weather balloon should come back about 20 minutes to 10 minutes before liftoff, which would be the final concurrence to go that the winds are within acceptable limits. So that's our big thing that we're watching. Uh, the ground winds are actually very, very light here. So that 10% chance of um, 
uh, the 10% chance of ground winds prohibiting liftoff does not appear to have materialized into a constraint today. So um, that's what it's looking like right now, although we will have to wait for the weather balloons. And yeah, we will just wait and see. So um, there's some, so on board the Falcon 9 on top of it is the Dragon capsule. This Dragon has flown three times, or this is its third flight. It has flown twice before. The current Cargo Dragon versions are rated for three flights maximum. The Dragon version two Cargo capsules, which will begin flying in quarter three of next year on the CRS-21 mission, are, are um, certified for five missions each. And those uh, Dragon version 2 cargo crafts can launch from either uh, launch pad 40, which is what you are looking at here, or launch pad 39A. Um, uh, the crew version of Dragon 2 can only launch from 39A because it is the only pad that has the crew access arm to allow the crew to actually board Dragon. But cargo can go from any pad. Um, for those of you watching too, um, I'm going to refer to this as pad 40, as slick 40, all that's the same thing. Uh, slick in this case is SLC and stands for Space Launch Complex, which is what the launch pads on the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station side of the Eastern Range here in Florida are called. Uh, the launch pads at Kennedy are called LC or just Launch Complex. So that's what we've got right now. An onboard Dragon is a multitude of science experiments. Um, according to um, NASA, there's about 9,000 pounds of uh, cargo onboard Dragon. According to SpaceX, there's about 5,000. So a little bit of a mismatch there. We'll work to figure out exact what the exact amount is. Um, but this is filled with 38 scientific experiments that this particular Cargo Dragon will enable over the course of its one month mission up to the International Space Station. And it will also be bringing back 54 scientific experiments for recovery and redelivery to NASA and the various scientific teams that have sponsored those uh, scientific experiments that are coming home in early January. Um, right now, this Dragon is set to remain berthed to the International Space Station for about a month. Uh, if it launches today, it will arrive at the space station early in the morning on Saturday, the 7th of December, and it will stay until roughly the 6th of January. Uh, that unbirth date and come home date on the 6th of January is a little bit to be determined. Um, NASA will make the final determination of when Dragon will leave the International Space Station after it gets there and the crew has some time to work with it. And the reason that date is a little uncertain right now is because a Dragon is not the only vehicle going up to the International Space Station this month. Um, so we have the, its launch today on December 4th. Two days from now on December 6th, the uh, Russian Progress MS-13 vehicle will launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Russia. At, um, and hang on, I'm gonna listen to the launch net real quick. Stand by. And we have scrubbed for today upper level wind violations, recovery wind violations, and but stand by. Okay. So that is official. Um, according to the net on SpaceX, we have scrubbed for today. Um, the upper level winds are higher than what was showing to the public. They are not within acceptable limits. Uh, the recovery winds on the drone ship were also way out of limits to, prevent, uh, to permit a successful recovery of the Falcon 9 first stage. Uh, weather improves greatly for tomorrow, they just said over the net. So we will try again tomorrow, December 5th at 12, 29 and 21 seconds Eastern standard time or 17 29 21 UTC so thank you all for joining us um, Das if you want to take it away for the outro um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, step away here but again if you are just joining us we have scrubbed for today due to upper level wind launch violations and recovery wind violations uh, downrange in the Atlantic for the first stage so Das if you could take it away
All right, we'll see what the delay is here. Thanks a lot, Chris, for the updates there. Hey, that delay is actually not too bad. I'll be darned. Um, Y'all, <laughs> you know the saying, you'd rather be on the ground wishing you were flying than a flying wishing you were on the ground, and the wind constraints just not with us today. Uh, sort of a bummer, but like I said, you, you don't want to risk that cargo going up to the International Space Station. Um, I will tell you, I will tell you, there's still lots of ways that you can keep up with NASA spaceflight in the meantime. Let's see if we can make this work. Hang on, we're going to do that. And we're going to do that right there. Let's see. Is this going to work? Yeah. Okay, this, 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 there you go. You should still have my desk. Does my desktop still come through? Yeah. All right. Good. Let me make sure this is all working correctly. Yeah. It seems to be working just fine. <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> Anyways, like I said, there's lots of ways that you could keep up with this in the meantime. Don't mind my Calvin and Hobbes uh, desktop there. Over on nasaspaceflight.com, we do have the full article up right now. So if you want to read more about what is going on with CRS-19, I'll go ahead and put that link in chat quickly so you can see yeah here you go there's a there's a link to the nasa space flight official article right there hey another cool thing you could do in the meantime where you're dealing with your 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 launch scrub anxiety uh you can actually hop over to the forums as well and there's a live update thread so i imagine in just a minute or two this live update thread over on the nasa space flight forums is going to have the information saying that they uh that they scrubbed for the day so let me go ahead and put that one into chat as well and another way that you can keep up while we are waiting for uh, the launch attempt tomorrow, again, that was a scrub for today, you can follow a lot of our talented photographers that are over at the Cape. NASA Space Flight's actually got three different photographers out there. Uh, Nathan Barker, early this morning, posted up on Twitter this really nice shot of the VAB. And you all can see the really nice shot of the VAB right there. I'm not going to try to full screen it or anything. But uh, if you want to check that out, here's a link over to Nathan Barker's We've also got uh, Brady Kiniston out there. Brady Kiniston got a nice early morning shot here this morning. Here's a link over to Brady's Twitter if you want to keep up with him. Again, all these people, you should probably toss them a follow if, if you're the type of person who does a Twitter. Um, they will be spamming all sorts of amazing flight imagery pre-post-launch. This is where the remotes come in, and it's really the first place to uh, to see it. So this one right here is Brady Kiniston again. More shots from uh, just this morning. There's a close-up of the Dragon spacecraft. And, uh, oh, <laughs> there is we've blurred out this nerd to uh, protect his privacy and then also we've got mike deep out there as well with nasa space flight here's a link over to mike deep's tweets for the day again toss them a follow and you'll still get some uh, updates some imagery pictures the pad photographs the remotes that come in uh, they have some video i know nathan did some behind the scenes video and stuff like that um anyways all sorts of ways that you can stay up to date while we do this however for today we did call a scrub. It is an official scrub for the CRS-19 launch attempt. The winds did not cooperate, so SpaceX over the launch net has called an official scrub. No chance of launching that today. Uh, also heard that the winds out at the drone ship, the recovery ship, were not great either. So they're going to spool this up again tomorrow, and uh, we will do the same thing. We will bring back the live stream tomorrow and see if we can't get a launch of the CRS-19. That's 1-9. <laughs> Sierra's 19 launch up the International Space Station. For now, we'll leave with an outro, and we appreciate y'all showing up today. Thanks a lot. Space nerds. I'll just say space nerds at the end, right? <laughs>